Nibbler is a module about exploring the musicality of counting in binary. It is a CMOS-based 4-bit accumulator, which means it counts from 0 to 15 and then overflows above that. It has separate gate outputs for each of the bits, as well as two stepped analog voltages made from adding those bits together. It also has inputs for each of the bits, as well as shifting, resetting, and changing the direction of the counter. It runs up to audio rates, where it is useful for subharmonic and noise generation, and down to LFO rate, where it can be used for arpeggio-like sequences and rhythm generation. First, we plug a signal into the clock input. These four switches form the binary number which add to the register at each clock pulse. You can see the state of the register here. If they are all down, then we are counting by zero and nothing happens. If we flip the switch, then we're counting by one. If we plug a stepped output from the nibbler through the data to the frequency modulation on the three body, we can hear that we have a stepped ramp, which is 16 steps at the rate of 1 16th of the clock, which we are taking from the boundary. If we flip the subtract switch, it counts down instead. If we plug the carry out into the subtract input, then we get a triangle wave. Let's plug the carry output into the trigger input of a kick drum patch we have over here created with an angle grinder and a boundary. Now we can hear when the register overflows. If we count by two instead of one, then we will get a ramp wave at one eighth of the frequency of the clock. If we add by four instead, then we will get a ramp wave at one quarter the frequency of the clock. And you can see it gets more steppy. If we add by three instead, then we get a sequence that takes a little bit longer to come back around. You can also see this with five. When we take the case of five, because the four bit register adds as a, acts as a modulo 16 operation, we get the sequence of 0, 5, 15, then when it wraps around, the next one is 4, 9, 14, wrapping around again, 3, 8, 13, and so on. Any of the odd sequences will have this sort of strangeness to it. The Nibbler has a second stepped output with a switch controllable phase offset from the first. So we have the two stepped outputs of the nibbler going to the outside channels of the three bodies ratio, attenuated a bit by the vector foil. The offsets and these two oscillators are hard, hard pan, so you should be able to hear the offset. The offsets available are 0, 45, 90 and 180. Now let's take the least significant bit of the nibbler and trigger a hi-hat made with an interstellar radio and another bit to trigger our 4MS sampler.
Let's also take one of these stepped voltages to change the sample of our 4MS sampler. So now we can explore some of the sequences available on the Nibbler. A full list of the sequences available with the switches is in the manual. So now I'm taking another boundary, totally unsynced, and plugging it into the shift input on the Nibbler. When the end of rise of the boundary is high, it will rotate the bits in the nibbler, providing some pretty strange glitchy sequences. If you make this asynchronous, it will get very strange and glitchy. Now let's use this boundary to modulate one of the bits of the nibbler. Again, this is totally asynchronous, but it can provide some uh, interesting variation to the pattern. Now I'm gonna cross-modulate the three-body a bit to make the synth sound a bit more interesting and use the second nibbler to modulate the first. Now changing any of the sequence on the second nibbler or the first will change the sequence. So now I've ran, so now I've used the rest of our gates and our boundaries so that we're actually running things through VCAs. And we have some sort of strange sequence happening that will change every time we reset or change our separate nibbler. You can also do things like this without the second nibbler, but with a clock divider or some other secondary uh, logic module. Now we're running the Nibbler audio rate. If we change the switches, we'll see that both the tone or timbre and pitch change when you change the waveform. If we listen to it at the same time as the raw oscillator, we can hear that with just the add eight switch up, we get one octave down, two octaves, three, four. Interesting harmonics. Now we can take another three-body oscillator 
and run it into the reset input. And we'll get sync effects. The shift input, which will give us noisy type, various flavors of noise. And if we change it to asynchronous, at LFO rates, this will give us sort of random chip tune melodies. If we plug the second oscillator into the gate inputs, at low rates, we'll hear frequency modulation. And at higher rates, it'll get filtered by the uh, by the carrier here. But if you change the register type to asynchronous, then you will be getting a combined phase and frequency modulation effect. In asynchronous mode, frequencies above the carrier will not be filtered. So now this nibbler is modulating the bits of this nibbler that's at audio rate, giving it these arpeggio type sounds. I'm controlling the three body with a keyboard so we can play those. Now we plug the gate out of the keyboard into the reset in on the modulating nibbler. This way when we play a note, it resets the sequence. So now we're taking a triangle wave from the middle three body and running it through a VCA triggered by a nibbler gate. And we're also running the audio rate nibbler through a VCA as well, also controlled by a nibbler gate, which is also uh, which is also triggering a kick drum and a hi hat from the angle grinder in the Interstellar radio.